Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a story of everything that transpired during my scoliosis surgery. This is the before picture. My curves are 60 to 70 degrees. And I decided to go with Dr. Baron Lawner's team at Mount Sinai in New York. After eight to 10 hours of surgery, this is what it looks like. This is an x-ray of me laying down of hybrid fusion surgery. The thoracic curve is fused and the lumbar curve is tethered. Here's a side picture view of what the screws look like. Here's a back view. Here's another side view. And then here are what the bandages look like. And this is me post-op day one, heavily drugged on an IV of uh, Dilaudid. Living my best life, as you can see. Here's what the drainage tubes look like. They collect all of the excess blood and stuff. Um, that is from my chest tube. I literally had a tube going all the way out through my chest to drain all of the excess blood and fluids as well. Post-op days two through four, something didn't feel right. I had a lot of swelling around my torso and my stomach and upper and lower abdomen. I was repeatedly told it was just distension from opioids but they began to realize that something wasn't right because I had already gone through three catheters and I couldn't pass urine, um, and I started to run a fever. So I basically just look like I'm dying here. It was too painful to move or talk or do anything. It was terrible. They did another like eight to 10 different stomach and chest x-rays and a CAT scan with contrast. After a bunch of blood work came back, I ended up with C. diff which is a pretty serious bacterial infection, but it's unique in the sense that it's also somewhat fungus related, which I must have undeniably contracted during surgery because they put me on so many different antibiotics during the surgery process. Before my blood work came back, they put me on two more different types of IV antibiotics, which made it even worse since they were not the right kind of antibiotics. But they were just trying to take preventative measures because they thought it was either liver or kidney related. I couldn't control my bowels for a while, it was pretty bad. But finally, we got on the right oral antibiotics. And here's my first attempt at standing after being switched to tramadol, which made me extremely nauseous and dizzy and sweaty. And my blood pressure kept dropping. A Couple days later, they changed out my bandages and the purple stuff you see here is actually an adhesive that's going to be peeling off. I actually had a plastic surgeon stitch me up, which is awesome, so I'm excited to see the healed results of that. You can see where my chest tube was on my side. A couple days later, and here's my first day of actually walking. Did a pretty good job. I think I started to get dizzy and we had to turn around and go back. They ended up taking me off the tramadol and changing my pain meds again. I was really impressed with the team here, the PAs, the PTs, all of the nurses, everyone did such a great job. I think this is another day or two later, first time trying out some stairs, and it did pretty good. Still quite a lot of crushing nerve pain and pain when I move my arms. I also took some measurements and I am two inches taller. I was about 5'4 before surgery and now I am about 5'6. And here is another video of me walking a little bit faster. I know I have a long ahead of me of rehab and trying to get my body back in shape and work out the muscles. But I'm super thankful for my friends and family and all of their support. And of course, thank you to my wonderful husband for taking care of me through everything. I'll keep you guys updated. Taking new x-rays about six weeks out and it's possible that recovery could take a little bit longer than expected.